In the FRCR oral examination, the aim is to test the candidate's knowledge and clinical wisdom across as much of the curriculum as possible. The areas most relevant to the oral examination are radiological anatomy, diagnostic tests, radiotherapy treatment, including drawing radiotherapy treatment fields and practical chemotherapy management. The questions in the oral examination have been developed as a result of a process of refinement involving all FRCR Part 2 examiners, resulting in a structure question which we feel reflects the full range of practice across the UK. After the candidates have registered for the oral exam, the senior examiner gives a short briefing on the exam process. The two cases you're about to view have been scripted for this film and are not taken from an actual examination. This film should be viewed as a demonstration which shows elements of the examination. It's not possible to recreate the atmosphere of the examination, but this film will give you an insight into the way exams are conducted and the nature of the questions asked. Hello. Good morning. Well, my name's Peter Bliss and I'm the uh, senior examiner for the oral examination today. Uh, firstly, congratulations for being here. You've passed the part 2A and that means that you do have the core knowledge required to pass the FRCR exam. We should be starting in about 10 minutes. As you know, there'll be eight questions in total, four questions from two examiners and then a break and another four questions from another two examiners. When you go upstairs, you'll be taken to the cubicle that you've been allotted. The bell will sound and the examination will start. At the end of the time allotted for your four questions, another bell will ring and you'll leave the cubicle. At that point, you'll be shown towards a small area with a table and some water so you can have a drink, but please don't speak to each other. After about two minutes, the examiners will have prepared themselves for the next uh, four sets of questions uh, and you'll be shown to the following cubicle from the one you've just been in and you'll have four further questions from the two examiners. A bell will sound to start that set of, exam of questions and will sound again at the end. The, the cases that you'll be presented will be the ones that you see in everyday practice. So we hope that you'll be able to provide the answers that you're familiar with in what you do each day. Um, there's no set FRCR answer. If the answer seems straightforward, it probably is. The questions are written by all members of the exam board who are drawn from across the UK. So this will mean that the answers that you give, what you do in your local hospitals, will fall within the range of accepted answers uh, that we have as a group. The information you need will be on the slide. We expect you to read the slide through on your own. Some candidates prefer to read out loud, others to read silently, but just respond to the question when you feel ready to do so. There are also some information slides without any questions. Just read those through and indicate to the examiners when you have read the information and want to move on. At the end of this round, I'm afraid that you'll have to go into the quarantine room. Um, you're not allowed to take mobile phones or any internet-enabled devices into that room in order to protect the integrity of the exam. But once the final round of candidates have arrived and been checked in, then you will be free to go. In there, you will find some questionnaires, and it's extremely helpful to us if you could fill those out. Um, we do read them carefully and I analyse them myself and in fact that has led to changes in the examination. Finally, is there, are there any questions that uh, you wish to ask? No? Okay. Well, it, it really just remains for me genuinely to say the very best of luck and um, we'll be starting very shortly. Come on in. Come and have a seat. My name's Dr Osler. I'm Dr Harnett. I'm Dr Green, the senior examiner, is in the background watching the exam process. I'm going to do the first two questions and then we'll hand over to Dr Harnett to do the second two questions. I uh, would like you to read the questions as they go through and then just answer the questions as, as you would do. There will be some pieces of paper to draw on and we'll start when the bell goes. Thank you. Um, the 
stomach appears distended mm -hmm. and there looks to be some lymphadenopathy in the periortic region. Can you show me that? Good. And oh, there, there looks to be a, a nodule in the left lung. I would advise it an upper GI endoscopy and biopsy. This is a, a palliative situation, okay. and I would recommend chemotherapy using ECX. Okay, anything else you'd do? I, I would check his uh, renal function. Okay. I should have got a stent. Okay, that's fine. Um, I would um, check his tumour for HER2 status okay. um, and uh, offer chemotherapy. Okay. So HER2 status is negative. Okay. Well, complete and partial response rate would be, be in the region of 75%. 75%. So survival without chemotherapy would be in the region of two months and with chemotherapy would be approximately 12 months. Okay. So there's erythema on both of the hands and area of desquamation. Okay. Be consistent with capsidabine toxicity. So I give him loperamide for his diarrhea mm -hmm. and some hand cream. Yep. Um, anything else, what would you do about the chemotherapy? I, I wouldn't proceed with the chemotherapy okay. and I would consider a dose reduction. I would defer his treatment by a week. By a week, okay. We actually chose to defer for two weeks, but that's fine. He's recovered from the toxicity and he seems to be responding to the chemotherapy. So I would proceed with chemotherapy, but offer a dose reduction. Okay. What sort of dose reduction? Twenty percent. He appears to have two lesions in his liver consistent with metastases. Yeah. And uh, possibly a cyst in the liver. Okay. And again, he's got periortic lymphadenopathy. Oh, and there appears to be um, disease infiltrating into the vertebral body. Yeah. four months out from chemotherapy. Um, what was his response to chemotherapy? He had a partial response. And what's his performance status? Two. Two. So I think I would offer him some palliative radiotherapy. Okay. So if I get you to... So this is just a picture of the one on the screen. I'm worried about treating the, the kidney uh, and dose going through the stomach. Draw the fields you normally draw. Okay. So I treat him with uh, a parallel opposed pair, um, 
six mega voltage photons, 20 gray in, in five fractions. Okay, 20 gray, five fractions. Yeah. The second question would be presented by Dr. Osler at this point. After the second question, the examiners would then swap over. Dr. Harnett will now lead the questioning from question three. Here is question three. So this looks like a solitary plasma cytoma. I would want to, in stage the situation and look for evidence of further disease. I'd want to do a full blood count, renal function, calcium, plasma electrophoresis, immunoglobulins, yeah. Bench Jones proteins, a full skeletal survey, um, a bone marrow and a CT of the head in the, to stage the disease locally. Okay. So this is a solitary plasma cytoma, um, and this uh, can be cured with radical radiotherapy, and I would offer 50 gray in 25 fractions over five weeks. Okay. I would normally use MV photons treating this if it were a skin situation. Draw what you feel is best for this patient. Um, I think MV photons with a, a wedged pair with the thick end of the wedge together. Um, there doesn't seem to be any evidence of skin involvement, so I think we can forego the need for wax block bolus. Okay. Um, and with CT planning, I think we can avoid uh, the need for um, wax nostril plugs. So I expect the beam arrangement to look something like this. You've already answered this. I believe you suggested prescribed prescription of 50 gray and 25 fractions. That's right, yes. Good. So I've got some plans here. Can you look at this first plan? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a wedged pair of photon, um, MV photon beams. Um, PTVs here and the 95% isodosis here, and when I, I look at the uh, isodoses, I see that high dose isodoses are coming quite far posteriorly outside yeah. the PTV, and anteriorly, the PTV coverage is, is, is quite poor, so Good. I wouldn't accept that. Okay, and second plan. So the, the angle of this wedge pair looks more. Um, more um, more acceptable, and as a result, there's less posterior uh, high dose coming back. But again, the anterior part of the uh, PTV is not covered adequately, so I wouldn't accept this plan. Okay, and the third plan. This is a an unusual arrangement of the wedges. Rather than the thick ends of the wedges pointing together, we've got thin ends of the wedges together. Um, but in saying that, this plan does seem to offer the best coverage of the PTV within the 95% isodose. So of the three plans, um, although unconventional, uh, this would be Good. the best Good. coverage. I would expect this treatment to um, control the disease locally in excess of 80%, um, but with a significant risk that he, he could develop myeloma in the future. Okay. Looking at this x-ray of the pelvis, 
is complaining of right-sided pelvic pain. And what I can see is an obvious lytic lesion in the area of the right acetabulum, which could certainly uh, explain that pain. Okay. I would offer him palliative radiotherapy to the, the metastases, and I would offer eight gray in a single fraction, a parallel opposed pair, treated to the mid plane dose using MV photons. I didn't see these, I must have confessed, I didn't see these other two lesions. Neither did we, uh, it's hard. How do you, what do you think, how would you treat him? I think if he's, well, first thing's the left femur, in the neck of the femur, it looks to be a lytic lesion. It's not been described as painful, but that may need attention okay. and review with the orthopaedic team. Um, but if that's asymptomatic, this uh, would alter my management in that we now have two lesions in the symptomatic area, so I'd adjust my radiotherapy fields accordingly. Okay. Show us how you're treating mm -hmm. so. I don't want to treat the whole pelvis, but I want to make sure I cover the disease with a, an adequate margin. I'd give him an eight gray single fraction, parallel opposed pair, um, prescribed to the mid plane dose with ondansetron cover, do a little bit of shielding in, in the pelvis um, using MV photons. Okay, that's the end of the oral examination and we await for the bell now. Thank you. The first case has been scripted to give an indication of the performance of the just passing candidate. No major errors were observed but there were omissions and there was a need to prompt the candidate to get the full answer. Some answers in case one were incorrect and there was a degree of uncertainty about important areas such as the dose reduction required for a patient with capcitabine toxicity. The decision to use radiotherapy for the patient in significant pain and with progressive disease only four months after completion of chemotherapy was laboured. In this situation, the examiners would expect it to be clear that there was an indication for palliative radiotherapy. The drawing of radiotherapy fields needs to be assured and give the impression that this is something that the candidate is doing every day. The second case was scripted to show a candidate performing at a very high level. Although there were minor omissions, in this case the candidate was able to follow the questioning and came out with the required answers readily. The areas of uncertainty were vocalised. For example, the examiners were clear why no bolus had been added. A running commentary by the candidate can slow the process down. However, indicating that a case or scenario is unusual for a certain reason, on occasion, can help the examiners to appreciate the thought process. So even if in this case there had been a view that bolus was required, the explanation given would have inspired confidence in the candidate's understanding of this aspect. This candidate finished the question with some time to spare. Provided that the question is completed, there are no additional marks for finishing quickly. <laughs>